So, yes, diagnosed in March. Um, literally just found a, a, a lump under my arm, under my breast. Um, I have had um, a different kind of cancer previously before, so I knew just, do you know what? I was working from home that day and thought, what I could do, I could do sitting in my GP surgery, just waiting for an appointment. And um, so, so I went over, he checked it, and yes, an immediate referral um, to get it to get it seen. Um, but I'm really fortunate with my employer that I've got private health cover. So it was literally, he wrote the letter there and then. I was in the car park um, two minutes later, phoning up Bupa, and I had an appointment the next evening. Kind of the, the flip side of that is that everything happens so quickly, yeah. you don't have time to process it. So it's, um, it's a, it, you know, it's a bam, 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 bam. So literally that by, oh, I think it was 10 o'clock the following night because it was an evening breast clinic they sent me to. Um, by 10 o'clock that night, I was on the train crying, going home, knowing I had melanoma. So it was literally they biopsied the, the, the lump that evening yeah. um, after they'd done a, a mammogram and an ultrasound. And I knew something wasn't right when the consultant who was doing the biopsy went really quiet and the nurse went really quiet. It's kind of like, okay, something's not right here. Because they were just so chatty and so just comfortable. And, um, and yet I asked them what was going on and they said that the biopsy they'd taken out was black, which is really unusual. Had I had a bleed, had I had anything at all just in terms of conversation. And because of the service they have there, that um, the, the cells are given an immediate review. Um, and so they were able to say not kind of what grade or how far it had gone, but the fact that the cells they took out were actually melanoma. So it was quite a, um, yeah, lonely time. You know when something isn't right mm -hmm. anyway. And uh, so after the biopsy, um, went into the waiting room and just carried on, carried on doing work on my laptop, <laughs> which is like, yes, okay, seems really funny now. But um I knew it was bad news when just being taken along the corridor to see the consultant again, um, that there was a nurse waiting at the door. And the other nurse who'd done the biopsy with me sort of just as I passed her in the corridor just touched my arm and, and, and sort of smiled a, a, a kind of sympathy smile. And, um, and I thought, OK, here we go. I had a, I suppose just a member of the public's view and knowledge of melanoma. Um, I think it's... Knowing that it was, um, because I had, obviously was having, I had secondaries, so I knew it was more serious, but it's kind of, you tend to think, you know, melanoma skin cancer, it's on the skin, it's just there, and it's, of course you can get it cut out and carry on as normal, and um, in terms of just my immediate response to it, and, and also talking to friends now, it's kind of, it seems the understanding of it actually as being a very serious cancer and one of the ones that actually we really have to fight to, to beat is, is not fully understood. My husband's not very good with hospitals, he's wonderful support, but it's kind of, that night it was, um, you know, it was just family, we had a tutor coming over for the boys, Carl has to be there um, for him uh, to, to, to be able to tutor the boys. So it was just family that family activities and, and, and commitments that he couldn't be there. And I've lots of girlfriends who would immediately get on a train and, and come to an appointment with me, but it's kind of like, oh, I'm just going, it's, it's normal, it's just check out. So my husband phoned me because it was 10 o'clock at night. Um, I hadn't appreciated that the appointment was going to be so long, or the time I was going to be there was going to be so long. I, I, he phoned me, where are you, are you okay? Um, and he met me at the train station. Luckily, I suppose, the, the scans actually showed it was just um, in the lymph glands underneath my right arm. Um, so uh, very quickly went in and had, was a, I hadn't expected a, a total of 31 lymph nodes removed. Um, so obviously, although everyone has a different amount of lymph nodes, it's kind of, it, obviously that was quite invasive in terms of how far the surgeon had to go. So it was... Um, it, it was uncomfortable, it was sore, um, however it was then just recovering from the surgery. In terms of the, 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 the treatments now, um, I had been originally referred to, um, to the Marsden to be considered for a clinical trial. And one of the things for me is, is I work within the pharmaceutical industry, so I understand 
the process of clinical trials. I knew where to go to get all the information and data that had been published. Um, I knew where to go to get the side effects and profiles of all the drugs that would be included in the clinical trial. Um, so I suppose on one hand, knowledge can be comforting, and on the other hand, it can be scary. Um, but I still wanted to, because I was stage three, and the usual is watch and wait, I felt I needed to hit this cancer with an absolute, with a stick, uh, with a bat, with a bomb, with a, anything, but just hit it as hard as I possibly could. Um, so, so going forward for the clinical trial was important to me. Um, so the next, I suppose, devastating part was the trials weren't going to open in time for me to take part because one of the criteria was you needed to start the treatment within 12 weeks. And unfortunately, um, all of the four centres in the UK are not going to open until probably September-ish this year. So I was excluded from, from that. Um, and I could have uh, gone to Texas or Australia because the trial's open over there already, but it's obviously a bit too far. Um, so that was a, a sort of a second blow, was wanting so hard um, yeah, to get to the next stage. I think for me is really important is actually meeting other people who are in the same scenario. Um, having uh, an opportunity to understand their experience and the fact that everybody's journey is so different. And just learning and, and listening is really, really important. Um, the other side as well is just the, with my scientific brain, is just the opportunity to hear from the clinical experts as to what is, um, is their interpretation of the data and their interpretation of what treatments are available of where we're going to next um, with, with, with advancements. Um, and, and hopefully to get, from my perspective, is melanoma on the same level as all the other cancers that we have access and we have the evidence for a treatment for every stage. So to me, that's really important, um, is to understand that so that I can, um, both in terms of help now the melanoma community, help me, help my new friends, help the patient conference to, to kind of move forward with that, which would be fantastic. I suppose as a, as a family, um, we've been quite cautious. We've been quite cautious around decisions of just making sure we have a little nest egg, we have an investment, we can protect ourselves and protect our family. Um, now, all holds barred.